excited to be here and to share this with you. During quarantine, I decided to create some painting classes and I went about it like from back when I was younger and the things that I wish I had when I was learning to paint, I wanted to be able to like sit down and watch somebody from start to finish. And so that's essentially what these classes are. So here's what all it includes. A paints crash course video that talks to you about the different types of paint, color mixing videos that teach you how to mix colors. There are 10 separate painting courses and each one is broken into three segments a beginning, middle, and an end. There's also free bonus material that's available to you through my website. If you want, I have a lot of extra resources for you, printables, um, tips um, on how to make your artwork better, tips on choosing your color palette, all that kind of stuff. You can receive that on my website if you go to www.samanthawood.art and go up to the top where it says art class. You can click that and then um, fill out the little form there for email and the request for um, that extra bonus information and I'll email that to you. And you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, and then also on TikTok. On Instagram especially, I would love for you um, to share what you're painting and to tag me um, so that I can see what you are up to. You can also check out what kind of art I'm creating and what I've been up to while you're there. I'd love to see um, what you're creating and find out if these courses have been helpful to you. So anyways, we will go ahead now and get started on this first lesson. Oh, one last thing. This little intro is going to be the same on every single video, so you can just skip it um, or pick up. Like if you don't need the color mixing videos, just pick up where you're interested um, along the way. I'll be releasing this content on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of each week for the next few months until everything has been released. So anyways, I'm excited that you're here and I hope to see you over on Instagram or Facebook too. I'm glad to see you back. We are gonna go in today and work on that spiral that's in the middle of the bowl and really start making these lemons come to life, work on our shadow some, and it'll be looking pretty good when we finish today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're ready to come in today with um, the second coat, and I noticed a couple of things. First, I forgot to include that shadow there, and then over here, this lemon is kind of got misshapen, and so I'll have to come in here and kind of correct that. I came out too far there, so I'll fix that. But then basically, and I'm gonna go ahead and get that kind of swirl that's in the background, work on getting that in place, because I feel like that's a really cool like design element to this and something I wanna kind of get in place before I go too much further. And for my shadow back here, I'm just gonna mix a little bit of purple, a little bit of that bluish brown color that I was using here. And fix this lemon right in here. Okay, so that center dot I'm gonna have to make this a little bit darker. And then it creates kind of like a circle around it. And you just kind of have to pretend like it's going, you know, like kind of visualize it going around and where it would come out. And this is one of those things <laughs> If you don't get it perfect, I think it kind of just adds some personality and character to it, so I wouldn't worry too much. And a lot of these lines, the way the glaze is on the pottery in the picture, it is not like a solid line, so you can do it where it's like thin and thicker and kind of varies, and then I'll come in with the lighter kind of in between and do more of that later. I 
guess a good rule of thumb is kind of as you keep going with these lines, just kind of keep like a an eye on how far you're getting from the edge. Like this one's getting a little bit further um, than this one is, but it's still okay at this point. And the lines actually kind of change, which kind of works with me. So um, it's going to be okay, but just kind of stop every now and then and make sure you're not getting like way too lopsided to where it's noticeable. And like this line, I just noticed it kind of comes from a solid place and then comes down to like that part of the lemon. So I put that mark there to kind of get that line in place. That just kind of helps me stay on track. I'm gonna take I'm gonna mix kind of some like darker blues and kind of fill in some darker spots and even maybe use like little bits of purple since that's kind of my color I'm using for my shadows kind of tie that in with the bowl and the dark areas at the edge and I'm gonna come in and remember I'm kind of like leaving that ledge because and I could go around actually with this teal color and do kind of a dark outline because there is a dark outline around the bowl I remember when I first started painting, my hand used to shake so bad, and now I'm just kind of used to it. Kind of learned to draw like I'm sketching with a pencil. The more you do it, the more you get used to it. And it's kind of like you care so much, or at least I did at first. I was such a perfectionist and had a hard time, and now I'm so much looser with it because I've made so many mistakes at this point that I'm pretty good at fixing them, so I don't worry as much about making a mistake as I used to. So just know if you're struggling and if you're at that shaky stage, like when you're doing lines and stuff, it's okay. It does get better. Okay, so now that I've got that dark outline kind of in place, I'm gonna kind of skip that space where that lighter outline is gonna go in a little bit and just kind of put some kind of dark areas in. And I'm noticing that right here in the glaze, you can see some of the like swirl lines that go through the parts where it's darker. So I'm kind of leaving some of that a nice little detail and difference to include in it. So at this point, and let's see, I do see there's like a little dark spot like right there. So I'll kind of put that in place. Um, yeah, there's a couple, so I might go around. And I kind of like going in and making some of these kind of more than one color. So I'm gonna add some of this blue kind of just here and there to some of these lines. Not all of them. That middle spot is pretty dark. And I'm noticing around the lemons, um, like over here is kind of in shadow and then it blends out. So I'm 
gonna take now a little bit of white and mix in with this color. seeing where I see these kind of darker areas at trying to get it looking a little bit better um, and I'm still gonna come back in in the darkest parts of those shadows with the purple again later some of these lines seem to be a little bit darker in that shadow and then around here it's definitely darker Okay, so now I'm going to kind of go back in. I'm going to mix some more of my aqua blue with my browns and go back in and kind of work on these areas a little bit more, but just kind of add some different tones. I'm not going to paint over all of it because I want some of what's there to show through. That's kind of how you get different tones, leaving your different layers where you've mixed it different times showing through. It's kind of how you end up with nice depth and stuff. So I'm not going to cover up all of what I did. like over here especially there's like a lot of kind of like speckling so I'm gonna go in with that same color I'm using and just kind of dab it on there and kind of random but kind of follow the curve of the pattern as I'm doing it want to get it I think even lighter maybe than what's there we'll see how that works to go in because I want to kind of leave some of what's there but then lighten up some of it with your white if you've already gotten like a big um, amount of color just mix it like at the edge so you're not having to you're that way it leaves you some of the old color in case you need it plus you're not having to add as much white to get it lighter by just adding it at the edges and blending it out And notice I'm not wanting those lines to be perfect at all because they're not perfect. And I'm also being careful like that I'm not putting this bright white like in the shadow parts um, that I'm sticking to the outer part. just mix in what's in my brush to some white and I'm going to go around and get that lighter edge and I'm going to go right around that dark outline that I did earlier. still mix 
mix in like with the blue boots behind it but that's good so that way I can really go in and add some like white white areas later once it's dry with my smaller brush um, in the final coat. I'm still noticing some places where I want like some of the lighter color. And in this area I've gotten kind of really dark and it's actually more of kind of a lighter blue in there. So I'm going to go in to some of that kind of teal color I had earlier and add a little bit more of it around the edges because I feel like it's getting too dark. Notice there are little places like um, where it'll come up to the edge. Kind of like that with a little line, like where it the glaze drips down, the darker glaze drips down in certain parts, but then the white kind of comes in between, or the lighter color comes in between. Um, so I'm kind of going in and doing that. It's like the more you do on it, the more patterns and little nuances you start recognizing as you go. for now that's going to be all I do on the second coat on the bowl part and it's like a low kind of flat bowl so it's kind of in between a bowl and a plate I'm gonna go ahead now and do some more a second coat on that shadow since I had just done it a second ago um, and then we'll go back and do our second coat on the lemons color on my brush I noticed that this shadow is darkest in here so I'm going to kind of add that by the lemon um, and then it's also darkest over here and then I'm going to go ahead and mix this color with just a little bit of white and use that um, to go over the other part of my shadows, the lighter portions of them. And then where the like the stripes show through, I might use a little bit more of that darker blue there. Where the shadows are and kind of I like to do partial outlines not where I outline the whole thing but I outline kind of certain parts just to kind of separate it So now I'm going to go in and work on the lemons a little bit. 
So put the whites where you can see it the most. It doesn't have to be exact. Then I'm gonna get, using this yellow light Hansa, um, and kind of going around that. Now I'm gonna take just a little bit of Kide Yellow Medium, kind of go around again. And then around the edges, um, I'm noticing this one has like more orange tones and this has like more of like the bronze yellow or like greenish tones. Um, so that's an interesting difference to kind of play with um, when you, as you're adding your darker color around the edge. So if I wanted to just add like a little bitty bit of permanent green light, I could kind of spread it out. Okay, and this part right here, um, it gets darker through here. So I'm gonna come in with just like a little bit of a brown, kind of get that shadow in place. This one has that same kind of green thing going on. I've got a little bit of leftover green in my brush, so I'm gonna go around quickly before my yellows are all drying up on me. This yellow over here and a little bit of permanent green light. So I'm mixing that bronze yellow and permanent green light as I'm going around the sides. Okay, so now up here, there's a shadow there, and then this part down here is yellow, or a little bit lighter, I mean. So I'm gonna add some of that kind of yellow light Hansa color down there at the end with a little bit of white even. May have to come back later and darken it up. Yeah, and I definitely kind of lost the shape of this earlier. So this is one of those things you kind of, as you work, you go back in, keep an eye on and correct your shapes as you go. Cause sometimes when you get layers of paint on there, they kind of end up changing on you. Okay, then on this one, it had more of an orange tint. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my Cad Red Light and go like that and two little slashes of it and then some of my Kide Yellow Medium and that should be plenty of oranginess. Yeah, so I'm liking how this one has an orangier tone than the other two, that's kind of neat. And it has a good dark shade. I'm gonna actually use just the smallest bit of black. I'm wiping most of it off on empty palette paper, but it has a very defined shadow right there. Okay, I'm gonna go in real quick with my largest brush and kind of add some more whites um, around the edges and do a second coat on that. loose and kind of left the brush stroke showing and I'm gonna leave that and come back to it later. All right, so we are almost to the end of this one. We just have our finishing touches to come back and put on there. So thanks for watching and I will see you back for part three.